Good morning guys, good morning everyone. Hi, hello, my name is CJ and I am here to discuss the creation of this artwork that uh, we saw or we're seeing right now uh, in the thumbnail. Uh, so yeah, this is what my channel is all about, just art processes and talking about the art creation process. So yeah, um, real quick, uh, before I start talking about like my ideas for this artwork, um, I guess it's much better if you just talk about the process for now because this 3D part is going to go by real quick. Uh, I think it's just going to go by for like five minutes or so. So let me just, uh, yeah, get to talking about that, right? <laughs> okay. So, um, what well, we saw what the illustration was at the very beginning, because I always put a thumbnail at the very beginning of my video. So you kind of have get an idea of what the scene setup is. Um, so obviously, and the 3d scene was the very first thing I did because I already had a vision in my mind. And the reason why I typically do 3ds for some of my speed paints is just so that I could just get the perspective and the lighting issues knocked out um, so I don't troubleshoot those two um, aspects of a painting as much um, so yeah that's part of the reason why I do 3ds um, when I do 3ds they're just really simple block shapes I mean you can tell that the person that's on the ground plane right now. I mean, he's just simple squares and simple rectangles, right? So I just basically just wanted to get an, an idea of where he's going to be. Um, so yeah, uh, I set him up. Uh, I, you know, blocked him out real quick. It was done real fast, real quick. And then after that, I'm doing the cubicles because obviously we're in an office setting, right? Um, and that's what the illustration was at the beginning of the video. Um, so yeah, I'm setting up cubicles and again, they're just blocky shapes, not no details. I mean, I, I don't even think I spent two hours on this whole thing. Uh, that's really just my time budget and doing all this 3d stuff is just do it in an hour, you know, just to get some, something going on. So yeah, um, that is what this is all about. Like, this is a really good example of why I, I want to do 3D, right? So uh, I modeled the person and I based the cubicles based on that person. But then the moment I modeled the chair, which I'm like putting all over the scene now, um, it was very apparent that the cubicle was way too small. So I had to enlarge it a little bit. And so that was a quick edit I had to do. So yeah. Um, but yeah, this is this is why I, I like doing 3D. It just helps me, you know, get some guides basically in, in my illustration. Here's another good example of why I use 3D. Um, so I did the plane for the ceiling and I did a plane for the floor. And then I basically turn on wireframe for those two objects in Blender. And the reason why I did that is because look, I have an automatic grid at the bottom and at the top. So now I know what my perspective lines are without even having to draw them in the first place, you know? And of course, this is the other awesome thing about 3D is that I could set up lighting and then get some of just the value range and just the lighting of the specific scene out of the way, see? So I set up, um, basically this cube and i just turn on emission on it just so that it'd be lighting up the scene and i also have like another area light that i kind of have um facing towards a person so that basically gives me a nice render uh, you could see a sample of that render on the top left um that's just a sample render and it's not the complete scene. I did a lot more edits obviously, but anyway, so now that I have that render and I got, you know, the basic idea of what the composition of the illustration will be, I obviously put this back into my 2D painting software of choice, which is Krita. Uh, and that's where we're at right now. And I am about to do my line sketch again in my line sketch. Um, I 
uh, when I do my speed paints, I just do my line sketch real quick. Uh, actually, you know what? W when I start out any kind of line sketch, I always start out le uh, loose and just real quick, real fast, you know, just to kind of figure some things out. Um, and then depending on my needs, I typically skip a good line sketch. Although lately I've been going back to a good line sketch because honestly nothing beats a good line sketch. Even though, you know, a lot of the line sketches disappear in the painting process. That's probably like one of my biggest frustrations when I was starting out in, in painting in general. I realized that a lot of a good line sketch disappear once you start painting. But it's part of the process though, you know, and I finally got used to it. But anyways, um, so yeah, I'm, since this is a speed paint and I've, you know, kind of had it in my mind for this to just be a speed paint in the first place, I, I knew that I didn't need to be super awesome with my line sketch, you know, I mean, you could look at my line sketch right now, it's all jittery and loose and rough. Um, and it's fine, you know, um, since I knew it was going to be a speed paint and then not a detailed illustration. But, um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing in the next few minutes. It's just for me to kind of sketch out the whole scene and the whole idea, um, and so while this is going on in the screen, I think now would be a great time for me to talk about my ideas for this illustration. Uh, guess yeah, it's such a weird illustration. I love it. It looks so cool and it looks so awesome, but it's such a weird illustration. So yeah. But um, so yeah, the basic idea of where this illustration came from. Um, the basic idea really came from a sketch that I did early in the morning. Um, basically, early in the morning and late at night before I go to bed, I always um, have a habit of just doing a quick sketch. One minute, two minutes, you know, whatever the sketch is. Um, I, I just do a sketch. And typically, my sketch is um, abstract. Uh they're typically robotic looking figures, which is, you can see it right now, like what I'm doing at the back of the chair. I always just draw these mechanical things in my sketchbook over and over again. It's, you know, kind of like my warm up, I guess, for the day and kind of like my cool down for the end of the day. <laughs> so, yeah, I just do something abstract, just something robotic looking, and I just do it fast and quick. So anyways, this is my habit for, I don't know, a good two, three years now, I think. You know, every morning, just a one minute sketch, two minute sketch. Sometimes I get carried away and I go for five or ten minutes, just really just depending on my schedule and how busy I am. Um, and then sometimes I vary it up, you know, uh, instead of just drawing something robotic um, or something abstract, I would actually do a study, you know, like I would pull up an image on, on online or on Google and just do a quick study of a person or of a place or whatnot. Anyways, whole point is every morning I have a sketch habit. Um, and so anyways, uh, one morning I woke up. And uh, this was way back in March, sometime early March, or maybe even late March. I, I don't <laughs> remember, but this is in March of 2020. Uh, basically, I woke up and I just happened to be looking at my chair. Uh, and my chair that I use for drawing and my chair in my office desk is basically a rolling chair and an office rolling chair. And I just happened to be looking at it. And I decided for that day that I was going to do a study on my office rolling chair. And so, you know, the sketch started out innocently enough. It was just like a study. Da, 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 da. And then at the very last minute, I decided, you know what, I'm going to combine it with my abstract objects. And I decided to put a bunch of technological things and I don't know, like, <laughs> like techie robotic looking stuff behind my chair, um, in my sketchbook and 
so yeah, <laughs> that's basically how Spaceship Chair <laughs> got born. That's what I've been calling <laughs> that uh, that sketch. is It's a spaceship looking chair because really it does look like spaceship. Because the abstract thing that I draw, it, typically it reminds me of Sputnik the satellite I mean because with all those spikes it kind of just reminds me of Sputnik I don't know why but it really does and so you know I basically like put Sputnik behind my office chair and then I started calling it spaceship chair <laughs> but anyways the whole point was that, that that sketch was really cool looking like it was just so awesome right and that was basically my idea for this illustration because I wanted you know I wanted to employ um, what I drew and just basically have spaceship, you know, chairs everywhere in the scene. So this is what this is all about. Now, as for the guy, though, like the guy is basically like far left field, you know, because I, I didn't really have an idea of what to put in the scene. All, all I knew was that I wanted the spaceship chairs and obviously... You know, since the original sketch was based off of an office chair, you know, ideally the illustration will have to be in an office setting. And so this is where basically this whole thing came from. Now, as for the guy, though, the guy is pretty much like left field. Like I didn't really know like what to do because, you know, me and my illustrations I always have a tendency for the narrative. I just love narratives and narratives typically don't happen unless you put a person in the scene, you know? So if I had drawn this scene without the person, it would just pretty much just be a landscape painting, you know, which is great. You know, I love my Ansel Adams. I'm sorry. You know, I do love my Ansel Adams. Wait, I think Ansel Adams is is a landscape photographer <laughs> now i need to make sure who my artists are but if i'm not wrong i'm about to google it just to make sure i'm right um but if i'm not wrong um or uh, just going back to my point um yes ansel adam was an american landscape photographer thank you wikipedia you are awesome um so anyways <laughs> um I do love my landscapes and I do love my paintings. I mean, Hudson River School was like one of my favorite art genres ever. They're such an awesome landscape painters. Um, uh, but typically this is not what my choice is. It's not my niche or I don't know, my preference. I always like to put people in my paintings just because, I don't know, it just seems a lot more vibrant to me, you know? especially like if there's a narrative aspect to it now as for what the narrative is i typically don't have an agenda like i'm not sitting here you know thinking like everyone should worship work or something you know because i mean this is what this guy looks like you know um this guy looks like he's having his church on in an office or something i don't know what's going on here dude i really don't you know but Anyways, <laughs> my whole point is that I knew that I wanted to put a guy in in the illustration, but I didn't really know what he was going to be. And if I'm not wrong, I think the idea of the shaman came from a conversation that I was having with my co-worker at the time. And it was like a completely innocent conversation, it, you know, um, I don't remember what the conversation was and I don't remember what the contact was, but I remember that there was a use of the word shaman, shaman, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Um, at some point in time in that week, I think there was a mention of that word shaman. And so I think that's where the idea came from for me to put a shaman together with the spaceship chairs, because why not? <laughs> you know, they're like two totally different objects that would typically not go together but you know we're just gonna do it because this is art you know and in art we can do anything so yeah um basically yeah as soon as i put that shaman everything about this illustration just became like fascinatingly weird <laughs> and the biggest irony about this whole illustration is that it start I, I did this right around when the whole COVID thing, you know, started happening. 
and and people who are losing their jobs you know and and whatnot so you know when i posted this in my social media you know i was kind of just like curious as to like what people would say which amazing enough no one said anything i was like i don't know if i should be relieved or upset that no one said anything but at the same time i'm just gonna be like i'll take that as a win you know um but anyways um I was kind of just curious about that as to, you know, what people would think. And I made it a point in in my posting on my social media that this has absolutely have nothing to do with what's going on currently. Like, it might have been influenced by what was going on currently when people were initially losing their jobs early in March and everything was closing down and whatnot. Like, this might have been, you know, influenced by that, you know subconsciously i might have been influenced by that but in all honesty consciously i was more you know influenced by my own sketchbook as well as that conversation i had with my co-worker you know like i kind of just put those two together in my head and so yeah but anyways my whole point was that this is really have nothing to do with like worshiping work or you know being a workaholic or any kind of statement about corporate america or anything like that it just so happens that i put that you know all these separate ideas into like this really weird unique setting of which where we are right now you know and in all honesty i mean because me as an artist i'm really just all about you know striking images you know even though i have a tendency tendency for the narrative again like i mentioned I, I love my narrative aspect and more specifically i love putting people in my paintings so you know um even though i do have a tendency for the narrative it does not necessarily mean that i'm trying to convey like a, a meaning or a statement or an imp important idea or anything you know like I, I just don't want people to take away the idea that work is all our lives all about and we're not supposed to go out and have fun because all we need to do is just be a slaves at work and yada, yada, yada. no <laughs> this is not what I'm trying to impart at all I mean for anyone like Miss Reed's this photo it just you know it just so happens to just be that i put a shaman in, in an office so yeah but anyways um going back to the whole narrative thing it does present like possibilities of what's going on in the illustration you know like one of the things that kind of was running through my head was that it kind of reminds me a lot of horizon zero dawn and if you guys have ever played that game and like the whole mythos um of that game is that you know way far into the future civilization kind of fell because the robots attack or something like that but then civilization was reborn but they were kind of primitive like back in the tribal days and whatnot and technological stuff is like way too ahead for them or something and so some people kind of look at technological stuff as like their religion almost you know so it kind of has that vibe to it, you know, and it kind of just makes me curious, you know, as to what is going on in the story. Like maybe the spaceship chairs were were a mutation of some sort of an AI robot gone rogue. And so now this AI computer robot started building spaceship chairs and, you know, to ensure the to survival of humans the humans must serve their god or i don't know <laughs> i'm trying to come up with a sci-fi story for this illustration really i really don't have one <laughs> at all enjoy it as is but anyways now that i have talked at length about the idea i guess it's really time for me to start talking about the process once again just because i realized i talked a lot <laughs> about about the idea but um anyways yeah the key important takeaway is that i didn't really have a clue as to what the narrative is i just knew that the image was striking and i just have to do it so i painted it um but yeah as for what the process is and what is going on in our video um i i obviously finished 
the line sketch and that was the last conversation we were having about what was going on and then after i did the line sketch i did my really weird way of coloring things i know the way i color things is just non-standard <laughs> for lack of a better term um but i guess to quickly explain as to how my coloring process is to do once we haven't seen one of my videos basically i just throw in just random colors i mean you can see the guy the sh shaman shaman guy right now uh well i'm working on his arms now so um but initially he has all this weird looking shapes and just weird colors like thrown in on him and the reason why i do that is because i just want to get some variation on my colors um, because before when I used to color uh, my colors were just so plain it just looks so plastic because I didn't put enough variation in colors so basically like when I do my initial coloring of my illustration I just you know pick a hue put on the hue jitter so that instead of it just being that one hue it will do like a few hues close to that hue original hue that I picked um, and then I would just throw it all over my canvas, you know, and then as soon as I have all this random colors and just random, um, looking noise, I then smudge things, uh, with my blender textured brush. And then as soon as I smudge them, basically the whole smudging technique is, I got that from like uh, pastels using like chalk pastels and whatnot you kind of you know rub things around with your fingers just so that you could blend them and they look like they have this blended look to them so basically that's what I'm after you know uh, so I throw in just some no noise some different color variations and then I blend everything until I get to a point where I'm ready to detail my painting, which this is where we're at right now. I'm ready, where I've basically started the whole detailing process. Uh, as soon as I get, as soon as I'm finished with the blender texture brush, I end up with this base paint. And this is right now what we're working and looking at is my base paint. If you look at my base paint, everything's base paint. Everything kind of looks fuzzy. Um, everything looks really soft. The edges aren't very clear. Um, the shapes are recognizable though. This is like the most important thing about smudging is that I retain the shape of most of the objects because literally you could blend to your heart's content until like none of the shapes read. But my main thing with the blending is that I need to preserve the shapes as much as I can while I blend all the colors as much as I can. So it's kind of like a balance that I'm trying to do. Um, so yeah, uh, as soon as basically I'm done with the blender texture brush and I get this base paint and you know, that base paint will always look like it's incomplete. It looks like, you know, it's fuzzy. None of the edges read, none of the details are there, you know? So basically that's like the fun spot to work on because, you know, I slowly just build on things and yeah, that's my detailing process. So basically in my detailing process, what I do is I, I do this three step process and I just rinse and repeat every section. This three, I repeat, rinse and repeat this three step process in every section of my painting, which the three step is I delineate my edges just so that my shapes could read clearer i mean you can see me work on the spaceship chair in the back you know i'm just trying to put in some details make some of the edges just read a little bit sharper so that's what i do i accentuate the shadows and you could also see me like add like a few shadows uh to the corners of some of the objects in that spaceship chair um because some, some of it just needed accentuating. And then I also add the highlights, which you just saw me put in the neon green, neon green um, highlight on the colors of, or on the lights of the spaceship chair in the back. And so basically this is what I do. I just repeat those three step process, delineate my edges, accentuate my shadows, add highlights over and over again. Uh, so yeah, that's what you just, 
see me do in the next few minutes just going over some of the sections of these paintings
Okay, so at this point, we're almost, or I'm almost done um, detailing the background. Like the only thing that's pretty much left for me to detail would be that chair uh, that we're kind of taking a look at right now. Um, I obviously need to detail him or her or it. <laughs> I need to detail that chair. Uh, and basically, uh, you know, mark out my edges and just make that chair like a little bit readable and easier to understand. Um, and then obviously after that, I will be working on the shaman. Shaman. Man, how do you pronounce shaman? Uh, basically, um, I'm going to be working on the guy uh, after I'm done with the chair. Um, as for like some of the art thoughts and processes, like I, I didn't vary a whole lot from the original sketch. Um, pretty much like... Uh, I pretty much just stuck with the original sketch. I knew I had some issues with the guy's uh, beads on his arms, his bracelets. And I also had issue with the feathers on his headdress. Um, typically on the headdress, um, uh, the feathers typically stand up, right? Well, the thing is that since his head is down, if his the feathers on his headdress are standing up, on a, like typically like the way it would be then it would be on its side um since the head is down and it just it looked weird compositionally that i decided to like switch out the feathers from standing up to like laying down so that when the guy's head is down it would be standing up <laughs> which is what we're seeing um so I changed it around and I had issues with the bracelets, you know, like I didn't really know what they would look like. Um, and I also had issues with the fingers and the hands. Like it's just, it's so weird for me to draw them because I knew that the floor was kind of slanting towards more towards the viewer. But like perspective wise, like I had issues with it. Like it looks fine, you know, like the way I painted it. But since I didn't have a good reference, because, you know, my original 3D was just blocks and, you know, just random blocks and it wasn't, it didn't have a hand. I kind of had difficulty with trying to figure out where things were. But for the most part, like how I drew things were just okay. You know, I kind of just draw them um, as best as I could. So, yeah, like uh, when it comes to like troubleshooting in like certain areas and certain issues i didn't really have that many problems i pretty much stuck closely to the original sketch um the spaceship chairs were really fun to work with like detailing those because i didn't really know like how they were gonna look so just going in zen mode which is like pretty much just automatic mode like non-thinking you know i'm basically just instinctive when i draw right and when i paint so anyways when i was doing the spaceship chairs that was fun because it was just like just put on as many details as i can slap this on here slap that on there you know slappy slap away so um it was it was just really just fun just doing the spaceship chairs um so yeah and then pretty much after i'm done with the guy like the last thing that i pretty much just worked on is obviously the lighting effect which is always just cool to do lighting effects in digital pieces piece pieces <laughs> digital pieces um because it's really hard to think of how the lighting effect would look like in a canvas like if you try to paint lighting effects on the canvas you could pull it off only if you have a really really good reference but unfortunately that's just one of the most unfortunate things about references even though you could do a google image search and come up with like five million results for any particular term it's just finding that perfect reference is so so difficult so this is where digital art is like champion for me because you could prototype like lighting effects to your heart's content and you know edit it without really harming the base paint which is pretty much what i ended up doing because i typically do everything in one layer as much as i can just like a traditional artist would you know as if you're painting in one canvas and th this is what i do you know 
um the only thing that i put on separate layers especially towards the end of the illustration the only thing i put in separate layers is pretty much just the lighting effects and like any kind of special effects that i need to do um so yeah uh in in this case like it, it was just really fun to do the color dodge effect um to do the light and basically what i did is just i i took like a rectangular marquee like a marquee the rectangular area and just put blue on there and then blurred it out and put it in go goss i blurred it out with gaussian blur and then i put it in color dodge mode so that um it looks like it has this lens flare effect so yeah it, it, it totally you know just added a totally different dimension to the lighting of the illustration so yeah but anyways this piece was so much fun to do like i really really love doing this illustration um I've been doing a lot of prompts lately and I love prompts, you know, so this was absolutely refreshing because this is just one of those few paintings that I did where it was just straight up from my own personal experiences and my own personal sketches. I mean, that's where the idea for this illustration came from instead of just prompts. So that was absolutely cool, you know, and yeah, but anyways, I just love the originality of this idea um and whatnot oh i totally forgot i added uh a blur effect on the neon green lights too yeah and there's the neon or not the neon green but like the lens flare effect on the on that big light but yeah anyways this illustration is close to being wrapped up um I'm really glad that you guys watched it with me, you know, so we could talk about the process and whatnot and learn a thing or two from my artistic adventures. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching it with me. I will catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night. <laughs>